official site in the official form and read the links. So, if you want to go straight to the gameplay, I would go to the next video, uh, just to save you a little bit of time. But for now, we're going to go into what makes this world tick. Enjoyed by many players worldwide. Gain fame as top class as a top class adventure. Become Emperor of the Colosseo. Take part in quests and explore the world. Or just relax and take in the gorgeous scenery. There is more than one way to enjoy the world and more than one path to take. You too can become a resident of the world and live the life you desire. Crests and Steam Technology Chaos Gate. This is a quest device that is key to creating a barrier that stops monsters from invading the town. Each town has at least one chaos gate, which you must use to walk into a field or a dungeon. Steam Alchemy. This is an alchemy device created by combining steam and quest technology. Just toss any item in from old equipment to spare items, and the device will transform it into a different item. Although the device was first intended to transform scrap iron into gold, the types of items that can be transformed are now restricted by law, as economists <laughs> were able to wreak havoc on the economy. <laughs> Ooh, steam bike! A steam-powered bike invented by humans. It is an extremely expensive item. Riding around on one of these scanty to earth you jealous stairs from people. See the gondola. The gondola has historically been used to navigate the canals in Makanu. Transportation provided by gondolas used to be essential to everyday life. But with the steady advance in technology, they have mostly lost their original purpose, becoming more of a tourist attraction for Makanu. Genesis of Greece. Long, ago, long, long ago, before the earth and the heavens existed, two brothers lived in the world. I see. Able to read each other's hearts without so much as a glance, the two were fully satisfied. The world was two. The two were the world. One day, the elder deity accidentally broke the younger deity's treasure sword. Furious, the younger deity retaliated by slashing the elder deity's treasured spear with his broken sword. The spear was split in half and the elder deity erupted in anger. And so, glaring at each other, one holding his broken sword, the other his broken spear, they fought. The war raged for seven days and seven nights. On the eighth day, the younger deity realized their foolishness and went to the elder deity to request a truce. But the elder deity... Still blind with anger, saw this as an opening and thrust his spear. The spear pierced the chest of the younger deity and took his life. The younger deity's final breath became the heavens, and his fallen body became the earth. The fountain of blood erupted high and became the sun. The broken sword shattered and formed the moons and stars in the heavens. Feeling great shame, the elder deity wept. His tears became rain and fell to the earth forming oceans in its deep contours. From eternal tranquility, the world was set into motion. Dang. That's uh, pretty messed up, man. <laughs> Eventually, he grew accustomed to his sad, lonely life. Oh. That's cute. One day, unable to bear his loneliness any longer, the elder deity removed one of his eyes and created a goddess. The new goddess looked at the elder deity and exclaimed, Thou art handsome. And with her voice, the world was filled with sound. The elder deity and the new goddess gave names to each other. The elder deity received the name of Sol, the god of creation, and the goddess Yulin, the goddess of harvest. 
Odin, the elder deity, created a land of the dead in the darkest part of the world. He sealed the spirit of the younger deity and gave him the name of Serunos, the lord of the dead. This is how all things were named and given a purpose. Sol gave birth to more gods and goddesses. Yulin gave the new gods names and Sol gave them purpose. One ruled the sun and another ruled the oceans. One ruled the weaving thread and another the stoves. This was how the sun traveled the sky, the oceans beat against the shores, and the looms spit out threads, and the stoves held the fire within. Sol then gave birth to trees, plants, beasts, birds, fishes, and insects. They all spread throughout the world, each finding a place to live. The world was filled with life. Was the bird? Is a bird? Last to be created were the elves. Sol created them in his image, and it was them that he loved best. Sol asked all the gods and all the creatures to grant the elves their blessings. Each god, goddess, and creature happily gave its blessings to the elves. As a result, the elves were faster, stronger, smarter, and more beautiful than any other creature. And moreover, they could speak the languages of all creatures. However, Serunos, the Lord of the Dead, withheld his blessing from the elves. Unaware of darkness, the elves' hearts were ever wrapped in light, but because of it, they had an incredible innocence in them. Is that a... is that a mosquito? I know it's just like a bird. Alright, the fools. The gods entrusted the earth to the elves and created their own realm in the heavens known as the Ersa Tribe. And I just go with that. The city of dawn. And so the elves ruled the earth and the gods ruled the heavens. Oh. Mm. That's kind of clever. They, they're kind of going into the darkness, but it kind of looks like an eye. Like an evil eye. That seen. Seen by the darkness. Uh. <laughs> The gods built a path connecting the earth and heaven and called it the heavenly path. The heavenly path was used to deliver the light of the heavens and the gods down to earth. Guarded by the light of the sun and the light of the gods, life on earth flourished and it seemed that peace would last forever. But as time passed, the elves began to believe that their powers equaled those of the gods. They built the aerial fortress of... Hmm, Fort Oosh. Oosh? in the sky to enter the realm of the gods, insisting that they too be treated as deities. Sol was furious and he took from the elves all that was good in them. The elves became slower, weaker, and uglier than any other creature. Humans scorned these foolish creatures and named them humans. Oh. Dang, man. That's messed up, dude. Look <laughs> at this five. Starting to... Uh, there were some who protested the treatment of the elves at the hands of the gods. These were the elves who had not wished to challenge the gods to begin with. They stormed the heavenly path and threw themselves before the gods, crying, Why must you punish us when it was not to be who drew our swords against you? The gods answered, That is true, but that is not the only sin. The elves asked again, What do you mean by that, O gods? The gods answered back, Very well then, when your brethren raised the swords against us, where were you and what were you doing? To that the elves replied, we were at the altars praying to you, our gods. We prayed that the fools who disobeyed you would receive your divine punishment. The gods retorted, were you not merely praying that your own lives be spared? The elves' face turns red and they could not reply. Suddenly the gods showed their anger. You are more foolish than the fools who do not know their place, lower than even the humans. From this day on you shall wear a mark, showing your supposed innocence and piety. And just as this thundering judgment was made, each of the elves that gathered the heavenly path began to transform. They grew tails, and their beautiful faces turned into those beasts. When they saw how they had changed, they screamed in shame and disappeared to the dark corners of the world. Um, Grunty race. Having lost their wisdom, humans brought war and chaos to the world. They had been reduced to creatures concerned only with domination, and so they commenced to make war on all other races. Sol gazed down in sadness at the ruined earth and decided to use the goodness that he had taken from the elves to create a race of Grunties. He dispatched them to return peace to the world. 
but the gods were afraid that the Grinches would suffer the same flaw as the elves and voiced objections to Sol's actions. In Sol, Sol cast a curse upon the Grinches and proclaimed, Listen carefully to me. I have cast a spell on you. It is a curse in a magic word it is its key. If someone, even just one person on this earth, says this word, a terrible calamity will befall every one of you. The Grunchies beseech him, great lord, then how may we ensure this calamity does not come to pass? Sol nodded his head and answered, you must not oppress others, you must not be bitter, you must not be envious, have a good and pure heart, and live your days peacefully. The secret word was told to all gods and all creatures except for humans. The gods were satisfied, and the Grunchies were sent down to earth. Without shedding, shedding a drop of blood, the Grunchies stopped with the violence of the humans. Overjoyed, the gods created magical powers and bestowed them upon the Grunties, but even with such great power, the Grunties did not fall prey to the sin of pride. Hmm. I wonder what that word is. Is it something like, you know, banana raisin? Banquet of Conspiracy. The Grunties were loved by all creatures, with the exception of the bitterly jealous humans. This is because all of the things that made Grunties so wonderful had once belonged to the humans. Humans began to look for Grunties' weaknesses and learned of the curse that Sol had cast on them. Overjoyed, the humans set out to learn the secret word, but not even but even the normally talkative monkey would not betray it. So, the humans held a banquet and invited all the gods and creatures in order the fog of their minds to drink. You would figure that this wouldn't work, but one after another, the guests became intoxicated until finally only the snake, the strongest drinker, remained. The snake still would not divulge the secret word, so the humans brought out the strongest drink and gave it to the snake. As expected, the snake became drunk and told the secret word to the humans. The humans rejoiced and, and intoned the word. Immediately, the grunties lost their intelligence and found themselves unable to stand upright. The humans called them Puchi Pongo and made them into their beasts of burden. They then proceeded to rekindle their war against the other races. For telling the secret word, the snake was punished by forever. The snake was punished by having to forever crawl about the earth on its stomach. Uh, so is this the Puchi Pongo? Is that is that the Grunty? Gods fell into despair over the human's deed. They created a great gateway called Morigbaro and blocked off earthly access to the heavenly path so that none could ever more enter heaven. Along with the ceiling of the heavenly path, the light of the gods was also blocked from the earth. Without the protection of the gods, the earth gradually became wilder and began to become corrupted by a dark power called the Shadow. In the vile influence of the Shadow, the earth overflowed with monsters and demons. These demons roamed the world and killed everything in their path. Many creatures were lost as a result of their brutality. Humans also came under attack by the monsters. They formed barriers in the major cities and closed themselves off. They fought against the monsters, but lost battle after battle. One by one, the cities were cut off from each other, and the barriers protecting the cities were destroyed one after another. Finally, only five cities remained standing. Jeez. The Goddess of the savior of mankind was a young apprentice magician. What is that? I see the face, but what? I don't see. It. I see the face, but what else is the picture supposed to be? He confined himself in the temple of Ark. They said this earlier in the in the game to Arch Arch Clone Kelm Arch Kelm. They prayed to the gods. In exchange for his life, he was able to call upon the six great spirits and two goddesses. The eight gods that summoned were Vulcan, the fire spirit; Meros, the water spirit; Krek, the wood spirit; 
Yarthkins the Earth Spirit, Lancer the Lightning Spirit, Wernick the Darkness Spirit, Anu the Star Goddess, and Aurora the Goddess of Light. The light of the gods shined once more on the blessed earth and the shadow was contained. Thanks to the newfound peace, humans once again prospered, but it did not last long. Once the threat of the shadow was gone, the humans began to fight with each other. Goodness gracious. After sealing the shadow, the eight gods and goddesses remained on earth, but some were angered by the foolishness of the humans and others grieved at their wretchedness and left, and so finally only Aurora remained. Fearing the, the light of the heaven would again depart the earth, humans placed eight curses on Aurora and sealed her inside the whole gods Old Grand Cathedral. Wow. We have some greedy little bastards, I'll tell you that. Battle against the gods. When the gods learned that a goddess had been imprisoned, their fury knew no bounds, and they vowed to destroy mankind. But the humans had no intention of meekly succumbing to extinction, and used their magic powers to devise a weapon that they could use to fight the gods. So began the war between the gods and the humans. The humans were no match for the power of the gods. The aerial city of Fort Oak fell from the sky, and the highland city of Doom Loriag was crushed underneath it. The cultural city of Carmina Gadelica was destroyed by the god of lightning, and many lives were lost. As a last resort, the humans took all of Aurora's power, transformed it into magic power, and fired it at the heavens. Heaven was engulfed in the flame, and the gods fell, fled or fell burning to die upon the earth. The humans sacrificed much as well. The relic city, Leah Vale, from which the goddess's power was fired, was reduced to ashes, and many excellent magicians died along with it. And so ended the age of the gods. Hope this is uh, teaching somebody that uh, greed just isn't worth it in the end. All the gods in heaven disappeared, but a single god who remained on earth lived. This was the god of all, Law, Olset who guarded the gate that blocked the heavenly path. Winning the war against the gods, the humans wanted the wisdom and power of the gods for themselves, storming Morik Baro and demanding that Fawcett invite them into the realm of the gods, but Fawcett refused to grant them entry. At first, the humans pointed their weapons at Fawcett and demanded he open the gate, but Fawcett answered thus, Do whatever you wish, there is no way any of your weapons can harm me. The humans followed his words and tried to attack Fulstead in any way they could, but they were unable to harm even a single hair on his head. Once they learned that force was hopeless, they tried to convince him to open the gates by seducing him with gifts. After seeing the gifts, Fulstead said, Build a mountain of gifts for me, if you wish. I'll make a mountain twice that size in an instant. Before Fulstead was even finished completing his sentence, a mountain of gifts more lavish than the gifts of the humans sprang up before their eyes. After learning that both force and flattery were of no avail, he, the humans got on their knees and begged pathetically. If a power greater than the shadow should emerge, we would fall into ruin. But if we could regain the wisdom and power that lies beyond this gate, we would be able to protect ourselves and not fight one another. So please, open the gate. Full set laughed and answered them, Was it not you who took up sword and shield and slew the gods? You should suffer for your sins. Protesting, the humans replied, So are you saying that we should have simply allowed the gods to drive us all to extinction? Fawcett shook his head and answered, Recall first the sins that you committed. Is it not just that sinners receive punishment? Judgment. To this the humans can make no reply. Fawcett continued to speak. But all beings have the right to atone for their sins. Human, child of sin. If you want this gate open, then bring back the lost gods. The gods will rise again. Born from the dogma of believers, if they are true gods, then I will open this gate, bring back what has been lost, and only then can he be pardoned. And so the humans argued over the gods' rebirth and once again made war with each other. It is gracious. Without the gods, the world fell into stagnation. With none to command them, the sun stood in place and the tide ceased to ebb and flow. The looms gave forth no thread and the ovens no warmth. Mankind had to perform all of these functions themselves. Despite these hardships, humans did not cease their wars with each other. Soon they invented different types of magical tools to improve their lives. Ten years after the Great War with the Gods, a researcher visited the ruins of Fort Oath. Many had avoided the ruins of Fort Oath, Leah Fael, Carmina Cadelica, and Loon Doriag. 
doomed Floriage after the great war in fear and hatred that they were haunted by the spirits of the dead gods and goddesses. This belief was further enhanced by the fact that most who set out to explore the ruins never came back. However, this particular research, researcher did return, and he brought along him a creature with the body of a human and the head and tail of an animal. The creature was a beast. Humans and beasts. At first, humans and beasts were friendly with each other. But while beasts revered nature in old ways, the humans were too innovative. It was the beasts who first discovered the creatures called Chimchims. When the beasts saw the light of the gods and the Chimchims, they decided to revere them as a legacy of the gods. But the humans captured the Chimchims to research them, and after discovering a way to extract the energy from them, they used them to invent steam machines. The beasts protest this treatment, but the humans would not listen. As the humans used to steam technology advanced, they abandoned magic as old and obsolete. The beasts continued to revere magic culture and rejected steam technology. Humans scoffed at the beasts for being stubborn and small-minded, and the beasts came to despise the humans' foolishness. Eventually, the beasts decided they would not leave the gods' rebirth to the fools, and proclaimed that they too would participate in the gods' rebirth. Falstead granted their participation. The humans were outraged. They believed that the gods' rebirth was their right. The two sides' antagonism towards each other began to deepen, and finally war broke out. Humans gathered their armies and steam weapons, but found the weapon production was lagging behind. Desperate, they built the great factory of Greg Epona, but they were still unable to create the necessary weapons. Beasts were mighty in the ways of magic, but small in numbers. They were unable to marshal a large enough army. Humans were weaker, but more numerous. Beasts were stronger, but fewer in number. And the war continued to rage on. Dogmas. Eventually, both humans and beasts grew tired of the long years of war. However, neither side was able to strike a decisive blow, and none knew a way to stop the cycle of wars and bring the entire gruesome conflict to an end. Oh man, who is that guy? Hmm. In this never-ending cycle, a new faction was born, composed of both human and beasts. The new faction concentrated on pure pursuit of power and incorporated the crest technology derided by humans and the steam technology loathed by beasts. Both humans and beasts feared that this new faction would enter the war and each side sent emissaries to the other to call and called for a ceasefire. At first both races were hesitant but they were forced to accept the sheer toll brought on by the war. And so the war between the two races ended but the conflict continued. Beasts continued to insist on participating in the god's rebirth, and the new faction proclaimed their participation as well. Humans chanted for steam technology and innovation. Beasts were for crest technology and tradition, and the new faction for the pursuit of pure pursuit of power. It became a quiet, colder war. No winners were was decided in this war since no gods were born from any of these forces. The three-way war smoldered, and in time, factions came to be called the following. Arvkaf, Arvak, Arvak the Innovators, Agnios the Conservatives, and Teutates the Pursuers. To this day, the three-way war knows no end, and it quietly drives the world ever closer to its doom. humans. They are an ancient race said to be the true descendants of the elves. Many humans have a tendency to look down upon the beast tribe because of their primitive way of thinking and technology. The animosity, Ooh, excuse me. the animosity between the two races has caused strife in the past. All humans have very average abilities and parameters and are capable of doing just about anything. They are highly adaptable and able to handle all kinds of obstacles that face them. Beasts are a race of creatures with the body of a human and the head and tail of an animal. They, have, they place a high value on the technology and culture from ancient times and tend to resist innovators, innovations. As a result, steam technology has yet to spread to their cities. Beasts are separated into three tribes that are differentiated by their appearances and abilities their parameters. Although beasts possess amazing abilities and 
abilities and skills in some areas, they are also extremely vulnerable in others. They pose fierce united fronts with their tribe to overcome these vulnerabilities. The Despise. Oh, okay. Tribes are roughly divided into the following three tribes. The Yacht Tribe. Beasts of the Yacht Tribe have fairly large bodies. Although they have bodies as hard as steel that are capable of resisting physical damage, they have limited understanding of magic and are highly vulnerable to magic attacks. The Lay Tribe. Beasts of the Lay Tribe possess bodies similar in proportion to humans and have the quickest reflexes and speed. Also like humans, they have average physical and magical abilities, but they are slightly less resilient. Two tribe. Beasts of the two tribe are smaller than the others. They are highly sensitive and possess great magical abilities and wisdom, but their bodies are much more fragile and they pose almost no resistance to physical attacks. Okay. Not paratakers. Gods and goddesses. The gods and goddesses created and ruled the world long ago. Most were slain in past wars. Only two of them have been confirmed to exist to this day. The surviving gods. God of law, Falset. Falset guards the morgue borrow that blocks the heavenly path. It is said that only those who are worthy can open these gates and enter the land of the gods, the city of dawn, or Siltri. Gods rebirth. Okay, I figured he should still be alive. Serenos, the Lord of the Dead. Serenos was defeated by his older brother, Sol, the god of creation. It was still in the kingdom of the dead. Refusing to recognize his own death, Serenos appealed to his brother seven times to be brought back to the land of the living. All seven times, his pleas, his pleas were denied. Why? I mean, if you were said that you killed him in the first place, and you have the ability to give him back his body, why wouldn't you? Are you still pissed off about that spear? Really? <laughs> Alright. Furious, he led his army of the dead against El Cetri, the city of dawn, in order to force Sol to return his soul back into his body. But when he tried to cross the lake of the dead world into the Indigo Lu, the root of the white giant tree, <laughs> Pladgud came down and blocked his path. Serenos was first forced to return to the kingdom of the dead, but when he tried to cross the lake of the dead world in the Golu, the root of the white giant tree, Haladgud, came down and blocked his path. So this is the first time we've even heard about that. It is said that Serenos still plots to return to the land of the living and rule over it. The monsters in the world are said to be its pawns. Uh, Vital Vistas are machine dolls created by steam technology and treated as domestic servants by humans. They have high dexterity and are capable of operating complex devices that even humans had difficulties with. They are also equipped with self-awareness and equal self-awareness equal to a child and are able to judge matters on their own. Recently, some vital vistas have come to possess self-awareness very close to humans. They have become self-sufficient and started to disobey commands issued by their masters. Some now live independently in towns and have jobs. More and more humans are now worried that eventually the vital business will revolt against them. Uh oh. Grunties! <laughs> the Grunties are famous for their triangular hats and their distinctive speech. They were cursed by Sol, god of creation, and were turned into Puchi Pongo and became beasts of burden for humans. However, they assumed their original form when humans defeated the gods. They are often entrusted with managerial positions of important facilities that are assigned as secretaries to VIP due to their peaceful nature and excellent communication abilities. Chim chims. Those are all chim chims? Chim chims are the only creatures that are able to produce chim spheres, the raw material needed to utilize, utilize new technology. Most chim chims are quite timid and tend to flee when they encounter other races, but some are more aggressive in nature and will attack any other race they may encounter. Oh snap. I haven't gotten to that yet. Elves are a race that died out long ago. They are said to be the ancestors of all humans and beasts. Spirits. Spirits are tiny sprites that inhabit steams, streams and forests. Magic spells harness their powers. The three main factions currently oppose each other in the world. Arthka, the humans, Agmios, the beast, and Tietate is comp <laughs> comprised of both humans and beasts. I still am not, am not able to pronounce that correctly. 
these three forces sometimes fight and sometimes cooperate with one another in a three-way war. With their steam technology and in an in in innovative way goodness and gracious, of thinking, the Arkhav are represented by the symbol of a shining sun. Centered around the eternal city of Makinu and the dual city of Regipona, they are led by a man named Ishmael. Although directly opposed to the Agnios, they exchange steam technology with the two types in exchange for help in weapons manufacturing. Agnios the Conservatives. Compo composed of beasts with their crest technology in conservative ways, Agnios are presented by a great gate in a magic circle. Centered around the celestial city of Doldona, they are led by a woman from the Two tribe named Bipu Bapu. They directly oppose the Arfka, but they exchange crest technology with the Two Tides in exchange for manpower. I don't see her little symbol. The Pursuers. <laughs> Team Tot, sorry, mixed force of humans and beasts with pure hunger for power. This symbol is a roaring lion and a staff. Centered around the warring city, Lumina Cloth, their leader is a young human male named Al Aziz. They receive steam technology by manufacturing weapons for the Opcon and receive press technology from the Agnes by providing military support. Adventurers are a mercenary force formed by the two types. Most adventurers join small scale war bands called guilds and work from within them. In exchange for being allowed to use the space in at home or borrow bikes, adventurers and guilds promise to support two tots. Also, guilds that contribute greatly to two tots. I really feel like I'm saying that wrong. Are given the right to use one of the three castles owned by two tots. Among the adventurers are some who wish to rise to the top of the two tots to perform the Ganage rework themselves. So I guess that's where all we are from because you know, but it says we're in, we we can go into Makinu and I thought that was uh where the Arfkab are. Hmm. Threats. Monsters that are controlled by the shadow that lurk outside of root towns. Most monsters disappeared when the six great spirits and two goddesses were victorious over the shadow, but they began to increase in strength after the humans destroyed the gods. Ogres. Goblin Rookie. Goblin Rookies are goblins that have just been appointed to their duties. They have not received much training and are unable to guard against enemy attacks. With physical abilities much lower than veteran warriors, they are easily defeated. However, they are still warriors and can easily overpower an adventure by sheer numbers. Holy crap! Wait, I don't want to read the threats because that gives me an idea. I want to be surprised. No, 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 no. Okay, jobs. Uh, actually, I want to take the new away though. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Alright. During your initial character creation, you can select a job class for that character. The character's jobs cannot be changed afterwards. Twin Blade, that's where we are. Twin Blades have high agility and attack with two swords. Their rapid attacks leave no opening for an opponent to counterattack. Blade Grandier. Blade Grandier's fight with a sword similar to a katana. It is said that all warrior classes derive from this class. Oh, okay. Although their abilities are average, they can adapt to a wide, wide variety of situations. Edge Punisher. Edge Punishers are a job class that prefer to wield giant swords. A blow from one of these weapons has enormous power. It can slice most enemies in half with a single stroke. Goodness gracious, Lord Partisan. Lord Partisans wield a giant lance. No other classes can match their piercing power. They have high defensive power compared to other classes, but are weaker against magic. Okay. Tribal gra Grappler. Tribal Grapplers use their own fists as weapons. They have high agility, similar to Twin Blades, and possess high HP. However, their low defense value makes it crucial to pay attention in battle. Flick Reaper. Flick Reapers wield a giant scythe. That's our third name. Uh, they specialize in attacks meant to keep multiple enemies away, however, they are ineffective at long range. Steam Gunner. Steam Gunners use the steam, steam guns that were developed by humans. They specialize in long range attacks and are weak to close encounters, but their powerful weapons will keep most enemies away. Adept Rogue. Adept Rogues are eventually capable to equip various weapons to use all sorts of magic. Oh, this is what we are. 
However, each weapon must be learned separately, which requires a considerable time investment. Even so, this training will eventually pay off making them highly adaptable to any situation. Are they weaker than their like main counterparts? Will a twin rogue beat an adept rogue at all stages of the game? In terms of just like one on one, you know, adept rogue. First, you know, like if they're of equal skill. You know, are their stats just slightly lower, like lower speed or whatever, or is it legit just a death rogue or busted because they just they're just as strong as their uh their main role counterparts and they can equip more than one weapon. Harvest Cleric. Harvest clerics are experts in healing magic and are allied with white spirits. They wield a staff in battle in the name of Ear, the goddess of Trap Tranquility. They can use some attack magic after they reach a certain level, but most concentrate on healing or support magic. Shadow Warlock. Shadow Warlocks are experts in attack magic and are allied with the Dark Spirits. They always carry a book of spells known as a Grimoire to heighten their magic power. Although they can use some healing magic, their repertoire is limited and not very efficient. Macabre Dancer. Macabre Dancers are experts at status and agility magic. Since they are allied with both Light and Dark Spirits, they are proficient in healing and attack magic. They hold large fans of both hands during battle. Their dancing form is said to enchant those who watch. Hmm. Okay. Turning no support information is available. Alright. So we went through all of that. Now we just gotta click through the form and we will be done. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Alright. Governor Tadashi. Medic Union. How fare these citizens? My name is Governor Tadashi of the Medic Union. I used to be known as the 100 Man Killer, as well as the 100 Man Healer, but cough, cough. It's nothing. Pardon me, just my chronic disease. Oh, goodness, cough, cough. My guild is here to bring love, bravery, and healing to the world, and our battle is never ending. However, the power of evil is great. The voices yearning for healing grow louder every day. You there, you passionate, fiery ones. Don't you want to do everything you can to smash this awful situation? Well, you're in luck, because I'm searching for warriors just like yourselves. If your heart burns as hot as mine, then come and fight by my side. <laughs> and yet, and let us yell together, and let it be known that healing will return to the world. I eagerly await your applications to join. Entry qualifications, as long as you have a fiery passion dancing in your heart, you're qualified to join. Entry procedure. Look at our member list in the next response and whisper me a color not found on that list. I'll come and meet you myself to give you instructions. Cough, cough. I mean, praise you personally. Okay. Finally, I will give you a healing changer at home key. <laughs> and with that, you'll become a member of the Medic Union too. Duties. Protect the innocent from attacks of the black-hearted monsters sent from the evil organization Bad at simple money sign money sign. It's a really weird way to say badass. If there are no monsters to be found, heal the people of that area. Say Neon at the end of all your sentences. Since I govern this guild, I don't say Neon myself. Huh. Our characters are all our character models are often the two tribe. These 18 names are our current member list. Heal Red, Private Seisaku. Heal Blue, Private Hideo. Heal Black, Private BJ. Heal Thunder. Wait. Wait, that's a, that's a color? Thunder's a color. <laughs> Alright. I'ma go with it. Heal Thunder, Private Osamu. Heal Pink, Private Lady of the Lamp. Heal Orange. Private Florence, Heal Silver, Private Rintaro, Heal Curry. Private Okai, Heal Purple, Private Agnes, Heal Carmine, Private Talise, or Telus, Heal Rose, Private Amber, Heal Sand, ooh, that is kind of like a different type of brown. Heal Private William G, Heal White, Private Impacum. Heal Cobalt, Private Rio Taku. Heal Green, Private Doyle. Heal Carbon, Private Private Watson. Carbon, huh? Heal Crimson, Private Felix. And Heal Iris, Private Chill. Okay. 
pitch. Thread in response. I'm sorry, but this is a question completely unrelated to the world, but what exactly are threads and responses? I see everyone using terms like creating a new thread or side responses, but I'm afraid I have no idea what they mean. What they mean. I'm a total beginner at computers, and I've only had time for mine for two weeks, so if anyone could explain these to me without much jargon, I'd be really grateful. Threads are, well, this is a thread right here. It's used to refer to a string of posts in a forum that talk about a particular subject. For example, someone posts a question in a forum, someone posts a response to that question, someone else posts another response. This is how threads get built in around a certain subject with people writing response after response. Creating a new thread refers to the act of one, which is a new topic of this book discussion. A response is just that, a response to a certain subject in a thread. Side responses are when one person posts a response in the middle of a conversation two other people are having throughout responses. Hmm. Okay, so basically starting from my first post talking about threads and responses and continuing all the way down to this post is a thread, right? And the things you wrote to help me are called responses, right? Sure, it, it sure is. Good job, good job. Okay. Huh. Um. Alright. You would figure that would be more in the lines of common sense, but I mean, I guess there are some, you know, just don't really, you know, understand the, the jargon. <laughs> Hello there, I just started playing recently. That said, I have a question right off the bat. Normal RPGs always have elements like fire and water, right? Does the world have things like that too? I appreciate someone filling me in. It sure does. There are six elements all together. Fire, water, earth, wind, light, and dark. You didn't see me. Uh, skip one. Wait. Wind. Wait. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. It's okay. But the current version doesn't have light and dark implemented, so right now it's pretty much just the other four. Well, she knows eight seeds. Actually, there are nine elements in total fire, water, wind, earth, light, dark, neutral, physical, and magical. Amongst these, fire, water, wind, and earth, light, and dark are connected as opposing elements. Opposing elements are elements that cancel each other, and each element's opposite is. Opposite elements also its weak point. Example, fire monsters are weak against water, and water monsters are weak against fire. No sense, but okay. Neutral is just that, an element that doesn't belong to any of the other six. Physical refers to regular attacks and arts performed with X. Magical, on the other hand, refers to all spell attacks. Anyway, it's a rough explanation. I hope it helps. Thanks a lot. If I have any more questions, I'll be sure to ask. Bikingo! Okay, you've all seen an animal that runs away from you at an amazing speed in both fields and dungeons, right? Can anyone tell me what that is? I don't think it's a monster. Kagari says it's probably a chimchim -chim or a lucky animal. The question is, which one? What does that animal look like? Biking go. Kind of like a horse, or maybe a bird, or maybe an ant eater. It looks like a bunch of things. Vertical Cupid says that's a lucky animal. You're right, it isn't. It's an NPC which, if you run up and catch and kick it, it will give you a lucky effect, an effect that's very beneficial to a player. It's a pretty useful effect, so do your best in tracking down and kicking them. Bikingo says, Bakugan says, what kind of effects would it give me? Kagari says, it depends on the lucky animal's appearance, shape, here are some examples. The moon rabbit gives EXP to all party members of the moon, I'm gonna uh, keep an eye out for that rabbit. Ganesha the elephant raises your max HP and SP to 1.5 times or normal max for a limited time. Nice. Baku the ant eater gives you lots of consumable items. Nui and monkey with a snake for a tail summons a king chim chim. There are lots of other effects besides these. Try searching for them in different areas and give them a shot. Oh, thank you. That was very useful. Big chim chim by Din Dekidin. Nice to meet you all. I'm Din Dekidin. The other day I broke a barrel in a dungeon and a strange chim chim came out of it. The, then the chim chim attacked me. I was surprised and inadvertently ran, ran away, but what on earth was it? Did someone tell me? It came out of a barrel, right? In that case, it was probably a king chim chim. King chim chims are a special kind of king chim chim. However, it's not a monster. Normal chim chims will drop chim spheres and run away if you kick them. But king chim chims will get mad and counterattack if you try to kick them. King chim chim's main attack is a mid-air breath attack. There will be a faint shadow underneath where the King Chim Chim will land. That's breath. Okay. So try to maneuver yourself behind the landing spot so to not get crushed and then kick him several times upon his landing. Once you defeat a King Chim Chim, you should receive a large amount of Chim Spheres. Good luck. Mm, okay, so they're called King Chim Chims. I never would have thought that there was any kind of Chim Chim around that attack players. So it was quite a surprise. But to Lamea. Oh, man. Was that you? Oh, man, you're everywhere. Uh, thank you for your information. If someone say King Chim Chim, I'll do my best to take it down. Okay. 
Almost there. <sighs> June pride. While we were walking along in an area, we were PK'd by a guy dressed in all black. At first we thought it was just someone being annoying and changed our area, but then he followed us to the new location. I guess it was one of those new stalker PKs. At any rate, he kept following us everywhere. When I asked him why he PK'd, he wouldn't even answer me. Man, that guy was creepy. He tried to fight back once, but we were no match for him, and our whole group was wiped out. It was heartbreaking inside. That must have been rough for you. I've been PK'd before, too, so I know what it's like. It really sucks. I won't say all PKing is bad, but pointless stalker PKing shouldn't be allowed. It's against the law to stalk people in real life, so why shouldn't it be different in a different line? I'm hoping that the law changes to prevent such